Listen, before I started lifting weights, I just have a disgustingly thin back. And it would bother me a lot, right? Because every time I look in the mirror, I kept thinking about it. And literally back then, the only thing I wanted to change about my physique was to grow my back bigger. And thankfully, after going through some long and intense training, I managed to increase my back size by a lot. I'm talking about almost doubling it in width. And today I wanted to give you the three exercises that managed to explode my back. So let's just get straight to it, right? The first exercise that I wanted to talk about today is the weighted pull-up. The weighted pull-up is such an amazing exercise because it activates most of your back muscles. And if you don't have enough strength to do weighted pull-ups, then do normal. Do normal, but try to add weight as soon as possible. As soon as you can do like six or seven pull-ups, feel free to add weight. Don't add a lot. Like don't start with a 10 kilogram uh, plate because it's gonna be too much for you. But after you get over like, as I said, six or maybe seven to eight reps, add like a five kilogram plate to your belt and your strength will fucking skyrocket. Listen, I struggled with this mistake a lot because I used to do pull-ups, right? And they, they've done an amazing job for me. However, I was stuck at around 10 to like nine pull-ups and I couldn't do any more. I've been stuck at this rep range for months and all my friends told me that, oh, it's too early to add weight. You should add weight once you get up to like 12 or 13 pull-ups. And guess what happened when I started using a five kilogram plate? My strength blew up. It blew up. I finally broke that barrier and I was able to do more reps because I've added weight. So as soon as you're able to do like around six to eight pull-ups, add like five kilograms. Five kilograms is not a lot, but it will make a lot of difference. And just, just one thing that I want to make clear, you should avoid pull-downs, pull lap pull-downs. You know what a lap pull-down is, right? Now, lap pull-downs work. Like your back will get bigger, but it doesn't have like as much practical usage to your muscles as a normal pull-up does. Because when you're doing a pull-up, right? There's a lot of like these subtle minute things you need to take care of besides actually pulling yourself up, right? Because your grip gets triggered a lot because you're holding your own body weight. Your core is activated a lot when you do a pull-up because you have to keep your balance, right? And when you do a lap pull-down, you don't really have that. When you sit down on a nice comfortable machine and you grab your little uh, barbell with, with like very like comfortable grip, it's different. It's different. You're not going to build as much functional strength on the lap pull-down as if you were to do on a normal pull-up. Now, I just want to make it clear that if you are a downright bodybuilder and all you care about is putting on muscle, then this video is not for you. Then go do your lap pull-downs because they'll do a lot of good for you. However, if you want to have an overall healthy physique, like a, like a athletic bodybuilder physique or just overall healthy, right? I promise you pull-ups are way better. Don't take this advice if you're a bodybuilder, but if you want to have an overall healthy physique, I promise you, pull-ups are amazing. And try to add weight as soon as possible because you want to blow up your strength on this exercise. You want to progress on it as fast as possible. You want to get to that weighted pull-up spot as quickly as you can because the earlier you get, the better. The earlier you get, the better. As soon as you build the strength, it's going to be easier for you to build normal reps because let's say you can only do like, I don't know, six pull-ups right now, right? Let's say you can only do six pull-ups. You add a five kilogram plate to your belt and you start knocking down weighted pull-ups until you're able to do six weighted pull-ups. By the time you start doing normal pull-ups again without the plate, you're gonna be able to do more reps and keep in mind, hypertrophy starts at around like this, between six to 12 rep range. So if you're, if you're not able to do this many pull-ups, then you're not gonna build hypertrophy. You're only gonna build strength. So you need to build the strength first so that you can use pull-ups for hypertrophy, which is why I want you to do weighted pull-ups. Now, of course, there's gonna be a point in time where you have enough strength to build hypertrophy with weighted pull-ups. That's the point where I am right now, right? I use like 10 kilogram plate on the first set and then I do the rest of the sets with a five kilogram. But generally speaking, they're an amazing exercise. And if you do them the way I just described, your back strength is gonna blow up. <laughs> now, the second exercise that I wanted to talk about today is the deadlift. It's the old school classic deadlift that everybody tells you not to do. 
All of the mainstream bodybuilders would tell you that you should avoid deadlifts as a beginner because you're going to get injured. Now, this is a yes and no to me because I, I only partially agree with this. The reason why is because if your technique is fucked up, if you're not going to pay attention to your technique and you're just going to add weight as soon as possible, then you're gonna, it's, it's bound to happen to you that you're going to get hurt if you do it that way. However, the earlier you start doing deadlifts, the better for you. Because the earlier you learn the technique and the earlier you start to adapt the right habits, it's going to be easier for you later down the line to get to get a better deadlift, right? I mean, think about it. Would you rather lift for a year, avoid the deadlift, and by the time you get better, you start doing the deadlift where you have enough strength to do it, but your technique is going to hold you back. This is what I've done, matter of fact. For the first year of lifting weights, I completely neglected the deadlift. I didn't do it at all. I didn't care. However, as soon as I wanted to get into the deadlift because I found out the benefits of it, I struggled. I struggled because when I had to do 60 kilograms just to warm up, my technique was right. My technique was perfect. It was, <laughs> it was really good. However, as soon as I wanted to add weight, as soon as I wanted to do 100 kilograms, which didn't feel like a lot, my technique, <laughs> I'll, I'll play you the clip, okay? My technique was fucking ugly. It was terrifying, okay? And the best part, it didn't feel like I was doing a lot of weight. Now, it didn't feel easy to do, but I could feel that I could have done more weight. But because my technique was so shit, it was holding me back. So the earlier you start doing the deadlift, the better. The earlier you start developing those good habits, the better in the long term. Now, speaking about the benefits of the deadlift, it's going to strengthen your body a lot because it's a lower back focused exercise, right? But it's, it works the whole body. Your hands work because you have to hold the bar. Your legs work because you have to push the weight up before you actually start working with your back. And overall, it's a very muscle engaging exercise. It's a compound movement. A lot of your muscles are going to get triggered. And overall, your body in general, like not just the muscles, you're going to get thicker by doing heavy deadlifts. Of course, once you work your way up to do heavy deadlifts, but the reason why deadlifts are so good, as I just said, you're gonna be way thicker. You know how some guys, I see this a lot with like beginner to intermediate lifters where their bodies, they have like the muscle definition. They have all that stuff. You can tell they've been lifting, but they're not thick. They're not like big guys. They have the definition. They have the muscles and all that stuff, but they're not big. They, they don't have that. To your physique, you know what I mean? And the reason why is because they've been avoiding these like big compound movements that actually like thicken your bones and strengthen your whole body. Which is exactly why I chose deadlift as the second exercise. Now we will get to the order of how you should do these exercises in a minute, but <laughs> that was it for the deadlift. Now the third and the last exercise that I wanted to talk about today. It's going to be the barbell row and specifically the supernated barbell row because the, the way you grab the barbell actually like affects the muscles that you're going to target whilst doing the exercise. So to keep it simple for you, when you grab the barbell with an overhand grip, you're going to target the traps more, which is good. But if you want to get that Dorito hook and physique, if you want to have that triangular shape to your back, then you should do a supernated grip because it's going to target the last more. And that's exactly what's going to give you that triangular shape, right? So to keep it simple for you, the next time you're going to do barbell rows, just grab it from underneath. Don't grab it with an overhand, but grab it from underneath. Now, as I just said, doing it with an overhand grip, it's still fine. But you're just going to target a different muscle, which we've already hit with the deadlift and with the weighted pull-up, right? So to keep it simple for you, grab it like this and just row. Just roll. Make sure you get the motion right, by the way, because oftentimes people like, <laughs> it's going to be difficult for me to show this, right? Uh, oftentimes people like pull the weight up and they're not actually like focusing on the lats. It's, it's difficult to focus. <laughs> it's difficult for me to show you this because I'm wearing a fucking hoodie, but essentially make sure that you find like the feeling for your back. Don't move the weight straight up with like your elbows going forward, but try to like swing it. Not swing it as in like swinging the weight, but make sure that the motion isn't just going upwards. It, it should go at like a like a small angle, you know what I mean? You need to get the feeling for your back. So it's important that you start off with a smaller weight, or sorry, lighter weight, that you actually like get the technique down because you need to feel the lats 
for this to work because it's an exercise that's pretty pretty easy to fuck up you know what i mean it's you need to focus a lot on your technique it's, it's similar to the deadlifts right if your technique's fucked up you're not gonna gain anything from doing this exercise so make sure you get the technique down first and you're actually feeling the lower back because you're not gonna get anywhere without that right <laughs> so yeah that's pretty much it for my workout oh wait one more thing the order of these exercises the order it's really important because to keep it simple for you again right uh start off with the deadlift always start off with the most difficult exercise now you want to start off with a deadlift because as i just explained it's a compound movement it engages your whole body it focuses on the lower back but your whole body has to work for the deadlift to work properly right so you want to start off with the deadlift and personally i would do deadlift pull-ups and then rows now the, the mandatory part is that you keep the deadlift on your first exercise because uh, it's a compound movement yada 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 i just explained it right these the last two are a little bit more flexible but from personal experience it's better to do pull-ups first and then the lats at the very end and yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> and if you have more questions and you want to talk to me directly make sure to join the discord and yeah i'm not gonna waste any of your time i'll see you in the next one